Hello friends and welcome to CEC live lectures. In the ongoing lecture series on extraction of natural products, in the previous two lectures we discussed about the conventional extraction techniques wherein I focused upon maceration, decoction, infusion, digestion, refluxing, percolation and succulate extraction techniques and we discussed their methodologies, the principle behind the extraction, what are the factors that can affect their efficiency and we also discussed the modifications of some of the techniques. In the last technique which we discussed that was succulate extraction, we discussed its modification regarding the integrated principles of different extraction that is one was succulate, second was simple reflux and third was continuous extraction procedure and these three techniques were integrated into one automatic system wherein you just have to put in the commands and the drug will be extracted. The other modification of the succulate that were done was combination of succulate extraction along with ultrasound assisted extraction vis a vis combination of succulate extraction with microwave assisted extraction and these modification I will discuss uh, in my subsequent lectures when we will discuss these techniques individually. So friends in continuation with the lecture series today I will start with the modern extraction techniques and in this we will start with the ultrasound assisted extraction technique. Now what we are going to learn in this lecture uh, first, I will just give you a brief comparison of the conventional to the modern techniques. Why modern techniques are beneficial over the conventional techniques which we discussed in my previous lecture. Then I will just give you a brief overview about the historical development of the ultrasound waves, how the, the applications of the ultrasound waves exist or they, they improved over the period of Time. Then what are ultrasound waves and what is the principle behind the use of ultrasound waves and how these ultrasound waves increase the extraction efficiency in the due course of extraction process. And we will also discuss about the instrumentation of the ultrasound extractors, what are the components that are involved in, in the ultrasound assisted extraction, then factors affecting this extraction technique, what are the factors that are governing the the matrix characters or the characters of the solvent or the characters of the ultrasounds that can affect the efficiency of ultrasound assisted extraction and in the end we will discuss about the applications of the ultrasound assisted extraction technique. So coming on to the brief overview or the comparison between conventional and the modern techniques as you can see the modern techniques they give you more yield in terms of the amount of the extract that is obtained with with amount of the desired component that has to be extracted. They decrease the overall time of the extraction in comparison to the conventional techniques and uh, in previous lecture we discussed that the conventional techniques usually take days or few hours to complete the extraction process whereas the modern techniques the extraction gets complete within few minutes. Then the modern techniques also exhibit a substantial decrease in the volume of the solvent that is used to extract the drug material. They also exhibit a decrease in the unit operation that is the setup that is required for the extraction process though some of the techniques may require elaborated setup for uh, setting up an extraction unit but if we look into the long term setup requirements then definitely those setup requirements are reduced with the modern techniques. Then they also show a significant decrease in the energy usage because we know that majority of the energy usage comes into play when the drug is being extracted one and second when the extract is being concentrated. So if we look into the benefits that they have decreased the extraction time, they have also decreased the volume of the solvent that is being used for the extraction and therefore the overall energy usage has also been reduced significantly. Further, modern techniques have substantially increased the quality of the solutes because the drug material is now exposed to the extraction conditions for a lesser period of time and they are exposed to lesser volume of the solvent and this in turn has drastically increased the quality as well as quantity of the solutes that are being extracted because now the solutes will be lesser degraded by increased temperature or prolonged extraction times. These modern techniques have also shown better return on investment 
because lesser in, uh, electrical usage or energy usage is, is there, lesser solvent usage is there, decreased extraction time is there. So, all these factors they, they have collectively reduced the overall cost of the extraction procedure. Though in some of the techniques the initial setup cost may be high, but over the longer run you will see that the overall extraction cost comes down and these modern techniques give you a better return on investment. And since lesser solvent is used, lesser time is used, lesser energy is used in by the modern techniques, these techniques are considered to be greener and they are considered to be environmentally safe. These techniques are also amenable towards modifications. We can fuse, we can combine the two modern techniques, we can modify these modern techniques and these techniques or their equipments rather and these uh, techniques are more amenable towards modification in comparison to the conventional techniques. We can also combine these modern techniques with the conventional techniques as I gave you an example of uh, soxalate extraction that is combined with uh, ultrasound assisted extraction or soxalation is combined uh, with the microwave assisted extraction. And these techniques modern techniques are considered overall safe for the user as well as the person who is using this technique these techniques are considered as safe for the per for that person also because there is a significant reduction in the solvent volume there is a significant reduction in the extraction time so therefore these are the few benefits of the modern techniques over the conventional techniques now we move on to the brief historical development of ultrasound uh, ultrasound waves in various industrial or applications or the uh, extraction applications. Now, it all started in 6th century when Pythagoras who gave the hypothesis that music is nothing but it is also a mathematical expression. So, what happened was Pythagoras was roaming in a market and uh, a peculiar sound of uh, a hammer hitting a iron slab fall into his ears. And he was very attracted to that sound. So, he started observing the blacksmith. And during his observation, he found that black, blacksmith was hitting that iron slab with different hammers, different hammers of different size. And every time the size was of the hammer was changed, the pitch of the sound was changed. So, he was quite intrigued by this observation. And uh, in order to further explore or to pacify his curiosity, he went to that shop and he start hitting the iron slab in a specific order of the size of the hammers. And by this method, he create a musical note. And he again gave the hypothesis that the pitch of the sound is directly proportional to, to the size of the hammer. And hence, he proved that the music is mathematical or the sound is mathematical. Then a major development in case of or I will say the initiation of the developmental phase for ultrasound was in 1794 when Lazaro he performed his famous eco location experiment on bats. Now Lazaro was having a brown owl uh, which was his pet. So he, he was always astonished by the fact that how these nocturnal animals fly or, or these birds fly or they see in in dark. So, he performed an experiment with his owl and he take uh, his owl in a dark uh, room where he lit a small candle and he allow his owl to fly and he himself move in that room and he found that there was no problem in moving around the room and the owl was also flying uh, without any problem. Then in the next step, he put out that cam uh, candle and now he again allow that owl to fly. But this time he found that the owl struck into the wall and he himself was not able to move freely. Then he was again intrigued that how these bats fly in the night. So he captured three bats and he exposed the bats to the similar conditions. And to his surprise, he found that the bats can fly without any problem even when the candle, candle is put off. So, in order to further make sure of his experiment, what he did was he closed the, he covered the eyes of the bats and he found that again the bats have no problem in flying even when their eyes were covered. So, he gave a hypothesis that bats do not require eyes to fly in the dark. So, further to sh make sure uh, of his findings, what he did was he surgically removed the 
eyeball of one of the bats and he put that bat into a dark room and allow him to fly. Again the results were same and he found that bat had no problem in flying and after some time the bat uh, entered into, into uh, a small space to hide himself. So his hypothesis uh, was, he was sure of his hypothesis that yes bats do not require eyes to fly. Uh, during the same time, Louis Jurin, who was a Swiss physician, he was also uh, motivated by the Lazaro experiments and he continued his experiments and gave the hypothesis that it's not the eyes that are required uh, by the bats to fly, but it, it are, uh, those are the ears that the bat requires to fly. Now, this finding again intrigued Lazaro and he further uh, took the experiments of Louis. So what he did was he covered the ears of the bat and made them to fly in dark. And this time to his surprise he found that bats were not able to fly properly as they struck against wall or, uh, or the other objects that were hanging in the room. To further make sure he put wax in the ears of the bat and they, he again made those bats to fly and again the bats were not able to fly in the dark room. To further sure his findings he surgically removed the inner outer ear of the uh, some of the bats and he pierced the inner ear of the bats to make sure that they, they are not able to hear anything. And uh, the results were same, the bats were not able to fly properly with their ears damaged. So he was sure now that the bats do not require eyes to fly but they require ears. But by that time he was not sure what is the exact mechanism that uh, how the bats fly in the dark. It was in 1838 when Griffin and uh, uh, Glambos who gave the exact mechanism that how bats use ultrasonic waves to fly or to catch their prey in the dark. Now the major impetus to the ultrasound discovery or the increase in the application of ultrasound was in 1880 when Pierre Curie along with his brother developed a transducer and transducers are the uh, are the equipments that help in generating the ultrasound waves. Basically, they, they develop a transducer which has a piezoelectric effect and we know that piezoelectric effect is nothing but whenever a pressure is applied to a solid substance, it generates uh, ultrasound waves. Later, in during the first world war, further modification or usage of uh, ultrasound was expanded and a sonar technique that is uh, uh, sound navigation and ranging technique was developed by Languin during the First World War for detection of submarines. Then during 1930s to 40s uh, the ultrasound waves, the use of ultrasound waves was further expanded to industrial utilization wherein the metal sheets, the flaws in the metal sheets were detected with the help of ultrasounds. The major Again, one of the major breakthroughs uh, for the usage of ultrasound wave was in 1942 when Dr. Dasek, he discovered or he used the ultrasound waves for the medicinal purpose or for the diagnostic purposes wherein he developed an ultrasound scan of the brain when he was working on a mentally retarded patient. During 1950s, there were further expansion of uh, the usage of ultrasound waves wherein the ultrasound waves were used for the cleaning purposes, specifically in case of jewellery. They were also used in carving, sterilization of food in the food industry as well as in the sterilization of medical equipment because it was found by that time that ultrasound waves caused damage to the cell membranes of the bacteria or cell walls of the bacteria thereby killing them and therefore it was largely used as a technique for sterilization of the food products. Uh, perhaps it was in 1952 when Spechett and Lebensum they first reported the use of ultrasound waves for extraction, wherein they extract the hops, that is humulus lupulus, which was widely used for preparing the beer. They extracted the hops by using ultrasound waves. And in 1955, Thompson and Sutherland, they also reported the use of ultrasound waves for extracting peanut oil. So these were the few instances how the usage of ultrasound waves developed through the passage of time. Now, what are ultrasound waves? Now, as their name indicates, sound waves, these are nothing but a sound waves, but ultra because they are not audible. We know that the audible range is uh, somewhat between 20 hertz to 16 kilohertz, whereas the ultrasound waves fall in a range of 20 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. Now, depending upon 
the frequency these ultrasound waves can be categorized into low frequency or high intensity or high energy ultrasound waves which have a frequency range of 20 to 100 kilohertz and in some cases the, it may extend up to 2 megahertz and the second category is of high frequency or low energy or low intensity ultrasound waves and these are also known as diagnostic ultrasound waves and they fall in a frequency range of 2 megahertz to uh, 10 megahertz and sometimes even 100 kilohertz frequency waves are also considered as diagnostic waves and these are the high frequency or low intensity or low energy ultrasound waves which are used for the diagnostic scans which we know by the name of ultrasound scans now we move on to the principle of ultrasound waves as uh, we have discussed that these are nothing but these are the sound waves and as you can see they have two different phases as the wave pass first is the compression and second is the rarefaction so these two phases repeat uh, in a cyclic form and that forms the character of an ultrasound wave now whenever this ultrasound wave passes through a medium say for example we are talking about the extraction process so whenever the ultrasound wave passed through the solvent which contains the drug particles what happens is the solvent molecules they they come close to each other in the compression phase so as the name compression indicates it compresses the molecules and the molecules of the solvent they come close to each other now when this pressure is applied when the molecules come close to each other the gases that are dissolved in the solvent they start liberating and these gases are liberated in the form of micro bubbles and this compression phase is then followed by the rarefaction phase which is not nothing but the expansion phase wherein that compressed pressure is removed and the molecules now move apart from each other during the rarefaction phase and as these molecules move apart there is a negative pressure zone is created which further cause release of the gases and those micro bubbles that were that were formed during the compression phase they start expanding because the further due to the negative pressure zone the gases further release and they increase the size of the bubble so with passage of each uh, compression and rarefaction uh, rarefaction cycle the size of the bubble increases until it reaches a threshold value now this process of uh, formation of bubbles through compression and rarefaction phases is known as cavitation and this phenomena was the first reported in 1895 by thornycroft so with the passage of the cycles the bubble increase in size and they reach to a threshold value where they explode or burst and it has been found that as soon as they burst there is a substantial increase in in the localized temperature there is a substantial increase in the localized pressure and it has been found that this temperature may range from 2000 to 5000 degrees celsius and the pressure may range from 2000 to 3000 atmosphere and this threshold where the bubble explode is known as cavitation threshold now this is the major principle this explosion of the bubbles and how this help in increasing the extraction we will discuss further now as i told you that bubbles are formed with the compression and their size increases during the rarefaction phase now depending upon the composition of the medium through which ultrasound waves are passed different types of bubbles are formed if the medium is pure and homogeneous say just we are passing the ultrasound waves through a pure solvent then the bubbles that will be formed will be symmetrical and they will burst less violently in comparison to the other bubbles so the burst the bursting of such bubbles will also be symmetrical but if that solvent contains the drug particles and hence it becomes non homogeneous then the story is altogether different and this time the bubbles that are formed they are asymmetrical and majority of such bubbles asymmetrical bubbles are in the form of donut shape and when they reach to a, their cavitation threshold they burst asymmetrically thereby producing high speed micro jets i again put an emphasis on emphasize on the increased temperature and pressure conditions when the bubbles burst so such increased pressure and temperature conditions lead to the production of certain high speed micro jets and in some studies it has been found the speed of micro jets is somewhat around 400 to 500 kilometers per hour and by and these high speed micro jets then they 
कोलाइड विद द मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स और द प्लांट ड्रग पार्टिकल्स विच disrupt the membranes and allow the solvent to enter into the plant cells and this is how basically they increase the overall extraction efficiency of this process now bubbles can also be classified on the basis of their survival time they can be stable or they can be transient now as their name indicates stable these are those bubbles which can survive through numerous cycles of compression and rarefaction phase and they have a they uh, float around in an equilibrium size that is they do not expand and therefore they survive so many uh, compression and rarefaction cycles whereas the transient bubbles are those which exist only for few one or few cycles of compression and rarefaction and they expand to in their size and they they explode violently or vigorously now you can see in this picture whenever the dried drug material is dipped in the solvent initially the solvent is absorbed by those particles and they swell to a more circular form which is shown in the second picture and whenever the ultrasound waves are passed the asymmetrical or donut shaped bubbles are formed which on reaching of cavitation threshold they burst Uh, violently thereby creating micro jets these micro jets fall on the surface of those swelled particles thereby disrupting the cell walls disrupting the stagnant solvent film that is from, formed around that particle and allowing more solvent to enter into the drug particle and solubilization of the desired constituents that are present in the cell and what happens is what type of diffusions that occur whenever uh, these membranes are burst by the micro jets so first type of diffusion is when the cell components move towards the stagnant layer because there is a concentration gradient the concentration of cellular component is higher within the cell therefore those component move towards the stagnant or the stationary solvent layer in second type of diffusion the cell components they directly enter into the solvent because there are certain broken cells or there are certain solute molecules which are entrapped in the interstitial spaces of the particles and such solute molecules directly enter into the solvent and third type of diffusion that occur is from the stagnant layer towards the bulk of the solvent and in the fourth step the the cell or the cell membranes or the cells that are broken the solvent immediately enters into those broken cells and give a washing to the interiors of the cell thereby solubilizing the components so this is how the ultrasound waves basically extract out the or i will say help help in extracting out the uh, solute molecules in an increased efficient manner now what are the effects that are produced by these micro jets when they impact when they they come in contact with the cell surface or cell membrane and these effects are fragmentation erosion sono capillary effect sono poration local stress and detexturization now we will discuss these effects one by one so coming on to the first effect that is fragmentation so as the name indicates it will cause reduction in the particle size of the drug material after the extraction or during the extraction is going on and after the extraction is complete as you can see on uh, in the picture i have shown a graph with two pictures on the right side the above picture shows the particle size of the drug material that was obtained after the extraction was complete and the lower picture shows the particle size of the drug material that was obtained after extracting the drug with maceration you can see the substantial decrease in the size caused by the ultrasound assisted Uh, or the ultrasound waves during the extraction and in the graph you can see there is significant increase in the chlorophyll content that was extracted out uh, whenever when the drug was extracted with ultrasound assisted extraction in comparison to that of the maceration in this graph you can see the average particle size during the ultrasound assisted extraction was in the range of 100 to 300 micrometers whereas the particle size of the drug material when it was measured after after the extraction by maceration the range, the particle size was in the range of somewhat around 400 to 800 micrometers so this is one of the effect that is produced by the micro jets so friends in the next lecture we will discuss about the other effects that are produced by the micro jets thank you